my voice is gone. Um, so I apologize for that. So when I was in college, my private lesson teacher uh, loved to say, if I played something well, he loved to tell me that it sounded great, but I sounded like a student. And I was, at the time, I was just kind of like, well, yeah, I'm a student. <laughs> That's why it sounds like it's being played by a student. But what I later came to realize was that, yeah, it sounded like it was a student playing, not a professional artist. So I'm starting a new segment today called From Musician to Artist. Because you can teach somebody how to play the clarinet, you can teach them technique, but teaching somebody to become inherently musical, you can't. That part of playing the clarinet comes from within. It's based on like your experiences with life and emotions as a human being. And I can't like tell you how to interpret a piece of music. This is going to be me sort of giving you uh, guidelines on how to interpret music, how to look within to find the artist within, because I feel like if you practice enough anyone can be a good musician, but it takes a special amount of you as a person uh, to really make a piece of music come to life, and I'm going to tell you how to do that, or at least sort of give you an idea of how to do that. So today's video is going to be about the power of dynamics. What are dynamics? The, well, okay, so dynamics are playing louder or softer um, over the course of a piece. P is for piano, which means soft in Italian. Forte means loud. Three P's. Pianissimo, I think. Um, that is extremely soft. Then there's Two P's, pianissimo. One P is piano. And these are gradually getting louder. Piano is still on the really, really soft side. Then there's mezzo piano, which is a little louder. Mezzo forte, which I feel like is a comfortable dynamic to play at. It's not too soft, it's not too loud. Mezzo forte is a comfortable dynamic. After mezzo forte, you have Forte, which is one F, um, loud. Fortissimo, two Fs, very loud. Fortissimo is three Fs, and then you can have like fortissimo, which is stupid loud. We're just gonna play as loud as possible and just throw good air, air support, embouchure, sound, out the window and just, you know, produce this loud, awful sound. But you don't want to blast. You don't want to feel like you're blasting. You want to feel like you're supporting, if that makes sense. So I remember I was maybe 15, 14 or 15, and I was at a chamber music concert. And at this chamber music concert, there were students, and it was a student chamber recital. And there were, uh, the last group to play was like the senior top group and everyone else before that was not. And so I was listening to my friends playing their music and I was enjoying it like, you know, little short chamber pieces, seeing my friends play, it was great. The senior group gets up, they play, and the thing that set them apart from everybody was the fact that they used dynamics. Like they just came out of this box and used dynamics like I had never heard of before coming from like a student group. And that is what could set you apart from other musicians. And I was just like, oh, they sound professional. So that's how much the use of dynamics can actually like enhance your performance. Another thing that happens is that I feel like students sort of get trapped in the mezzo box. And what I mean by the mezzo box is that they are told to play soft and they play mezzo piano, they're told to play loud and they play mezzo forte, 
and they never expand outside. And I'm going to talk about that in a, in a few minutes, but try not to get stuck in the mezzo box. Like, if you're playing really, really quietly with a good sound, I'm just going to, you know, a good playing with a good sound and good air support is just going to be sort of like a known thing. That's going to be assumed. So if you're playing super quiet, the audience is going to like, listen, you're bringing the audience to you. And if you're playing really loud, it's exciting and fun and like badass. So how do you practice dynamics? Well, <laughs> if you're practicing long tones every day, which you should be doing, let's just give an example. You're playing a chromatic scale starting at the lowest note of the clarinet, which is an E, <clears throat> and you are just playing a, a slow chromatic scale ascending at quarter note equals 60, and each note is going to be a whole note, so four beats per note. Because for four clicks, you can start from piano. You can gradually get louder until your forte at the end of the four clicks. And then continuing on the next four clicks will be forte going down to piano. You can also practice starting really, really soft and ending loud. And then going to the next note, starting really soft, ending loud. Or you can start really loud and over the course of four beats, get really soft. You can make up your own exercises. You don't need a book to do this. Because the first time you play something really super loud, it might be super flat. And, you know, if you're practicing playing really softly, it might be super sharp. So the more that you practice dynamics with a tuner, doing something like long tones over time, then, like, the more you'll build the lip strength and the ear skills and the air support that you need. And I also feel like dynamics kind of get forgotten when you're learning a piece of music. I know I've been guilty of that, where like you're playing something and like you can get through it and then all of a sudden you realize, oh shit, I forgot a giant crescendo, which is gonna affect my air, which is going to affect the, the you know, everything I just practiced. Like, I can get through it in one breath now, but if I add a crescendo, I'm gonna run out of air. So when you're learning a piece of music, learn the dynamics, practice the dynamics with the notes because that, you know, if you practice, if you, let's just say you have all super high notes and you practice it at mezzo forte, but it was supposed to be piano. It's supposed to be soft. You now have to relearn that entire passage because you have to go in and pr like play every single note differently than how you just played it. You need more support in the lips, you need more support from your air, you need super, like a super high level of control over those notes at a softer volume. Play at a softer volume. So in order to avoid relearning everything that you just practiced, make sure you remember to practice your dynamics while you're learning the piece. They sound professional.